Real Foot Lake is such a unique place. Uh, it's an invaluable and irreplaceable resource. And it's, so, it's valuable to, to so many species and uh, the people that live around here. So many uh, species and people depend on it. It's just magical. It's got, uh, you know, you go to another lake and there's not little trees that are growing up in the middle of the water. Um, of course, we've got our eagles here and osprey nests that are so close to the water you could almost reach up and touch them. They're so close. So you can see things up close and personal here. Uh, this place exists because we are here for protection and sanctuary for waterfowl. We were established in 1941 to protect these waterfowl when they come through during migration. We want to make sure we have a nice habitat for them. And uh, we manage the food for them. We grow lots of corn and natural vegetation for the waterfowl solely. Real Foot Lake is, is positioned in the heart of the Mississippi Flyway. So it's an important stopover site for migrating and wintering waterfowl. So it's important that we provide the right uh, resources at the right place at the right time for those migrating and wintering birds so that they can get, get the, the nutrition and the, uh, the protection and the rest that they need to continue migration and return healthy. Uh, the Real Foot Lake area is about 30,000 acres or so. Uh, the Real Foot National Wildlife Refuge is 10,428 acres. So we manage the upper third of Real Foot Lake for um, the migratory waterfowl. It was formed by earthquakes in 1811 and 1812. There was a series of almost 2,000 earthquakes, and many people think that it was just you know, an earthquake or two, but there was, I believe the number is 1,874 total earthquakes that occurred in this area between December and March. 1811, 1912. So it was a very short amount of time and many, many earthquakes happened in that point. The largest one happened on February the 7th at 3 o'clock a.m. and pretty much what happened, the land where Real Foot Lake is sunk down and it formed a dome in Tiptonville, they call the Tiptonville Dome. And the water from the Mississippi River backflowed into this area and filled it up and that's how Real Foot Lake was formed. So a natural lake, there's lots of stumps. There was a, a swampy forest before it was a lake and so that's where you have all the stumps underneath the water, which of course they all came in there and were logged eventually, but uh, you have a lot of stumps underneath, which makes it a really good fish hatchery with all the stuff underneath the water. The refuge system is, is the only national network of lands uh, dedicated solely for wildlife conservation. And so that's what we're here for. Uh, there's, there's, in short, uh, wildlife come first on national wildlife refuges. Uh, now, in addition to that, public use is extremely important. And that's what we're ultimately here for, is to, for the benefit of the American people. And so we have six priority public uses or public uh, recreational uses that are prioritized. And those include hunting, fishing, outdoor photography, uh, wildlife observation, and as well as uh, environmental education interpretation. So with those six uses, as long as they are compatible with the refuge's purpose, uh, then, then they're allowed on the refuge. This area, northwest Tennessee and southwest Kentucky, has always been known uh, for, uh, for its hunting and fishing, uh, even before the earthquake. And so it seems that after the formation of the lake through the earthquake, it just uh, added to that reputation. And so as far back as uh, after the earthquake in the 1811 and 1812, as, as far back as the mid-1800s, uh, people began setting up hunting camps, hunting and fishing camps, and these hunting clubs, and some of them are still active today. Ever since then, it's been known as a popular destination for sportsmen all over. Well, Real Foot Lake is known for its waterfowl heritage, and there is no other place like it. And so, to come to Real Foot uh, Lake and, and the refuge, and uh, to see 10,000 ducks or geese um, in one, you know, just a few acres is really spectacular. And it's, there's not many places where you can go and see that. You add to that the bald eagles that are following the ducks and geese down to the system, and that just, that's just icing on the cake. Yeah, that's, that's one of the most rewarding things, just to see people come away and think, man, why, why don't we come here more often? In January, we have thousands of ducks and thousands of geese. Not a lot of vegetation this time of year. Uh, you see a lot of ice sometimes, but uh, you get to see a, a bigger variety of your ducks. You know, during the year, you have oh, year round, you have ducks like your mallards and your wood ducks. But during the winter time, you have gadwalls and you have widgeons and you have pintails and different types of teal and scop and just all kinds of different types of ducks that you don't normally get to see in the, the rest of the year.
Yeah, you're talking several thousand, and it depends on the weather. When we get a nice cold front in, that's going to push more birds this way, and you can see, you know, several thousand, several thousand birds. That, but they've documented 90,000 birds in some areas. It just depends on, you know, where they're located and the type of weather that comes through here. But yeah, it's easy to see 10, 12, 15,000 birds on a refuge at a given time. Well, that's one of the, my favorite parts about Real Foot Lake is that uh, if you come in the winter and you come back in the summer, you feel like you're in a different place. Each season is so different with different species you see, uh, with different uh, vegetation or lack thereof, the ice, everything just looks so much different uh, that uh, you could come back in four different times of the year and just feel like you're in a different place. It's extremely magical. It's, there's something majestic about the 200-year-old cypress trees out there in the middle of the lake and canoeing through it and just it sets you back in time. It really does. It's amazing. It is fantastic. It's something different every single day. You get to see things that a lot of people don't get to see. Um, who gets to go to work and hear geese flying over you honking and then you get to drive to another area and you see thousands of ducks flying up and eagles flying over them trying to catch them for food. So it's, it's wonderful to work here. I absolutely love it. It's what it's all about. It's why we're here. We're here to as a showcase of, of a unique wetland and to give people, and especially youth, exposure to that, to let them know what's out there and to let them know, uh, to show them what their ancestors had the foresight to see the need to protect and so that they can have that same mindset and uh, they can bring their grandkids out here to do the same thing.